How's it going there guys? It's uh, July 6th here today. Um, clearly there's green grass and trees. So we're obviously up north. Um, we just got up here. Oh man, I guess it'd be a couple days ago now and I can't even remember the last video I did. Can't remember if I did a video of the crop touring up here. I think I might have. But anyways, not sure. I'm losing track of all the days and the dates. But we brought the dash up from the south farm because we concluded spraying for a temporary uh, amount of time because our chickpeas are every so often. We've got to keep spraying them all through the summer and fall. So I brought the dash up here so we could do a bit of a video with it. Anyways, we are spraying Fusarium. We are spraying four Fusarium head blight in our wheat and durum up here. And we might hit the lentils because we have lentils up here for a second app of fungicide. So let's, the, the dash is fully loaded. We are literally waiting for uh, Donovan. He's on the sprayer. He's out there somewhere. We might wander out there in a minute. But, uh, so this is not like the newest of the newest versions of the dash sprayers or sprayer trailers, okay? Cause it's actually our trailer. We already had the tank set up. Uh, fiber came and they dropped that on there and they dropped that on there put the steps on, ran some hoses, and uh, they're pretty awesome. So uh, the new trailers have a lot of updates. Obviously they have bigger tanks for your chem handler. I think they have uh, maybe another step up here yet again. Uh, more lights. And obviously when you order a trailer, they put it on a 53 triac, so this is only 48 tandem. Uh, gives you a little bit more room. Gives you some more options to put down some uh, uh, other layouts, so there's tons of different layouts. You can get boom on this side, boom on the other side, which I would highly recommend. Um, I've said it before, for me and our operation, or for I and our operation, I would want, say, these two tanks plumbed separately, going out on a boom on this side, the Lotus Prayer, and say we have fungicide on this, these two. And then these two on a pump, on a boom, going out this side so you can load a sprayer with, say, herbicide. Uh, I would like to load two sprayers at the exact same time with two completely different products. That would be optimal. So if I was to do it again, that's probably what I would try and do. Now, we are, uh, we got our, we're putting down some micros, biologicals, and uh, we're putting down some fungicide chemical as well. All goes down in the same sprayer. Um, really nothing fancy about it. Some chemicals are gonna go on the lentils. This stuff's actually gonna go back. We're gonna keep spraying this uh, Spherix. And then uh, we have a water station here that we preloaded with water prior to coming down here with the dash sprayer and to spray. But enough talking, let's start. Oh yeah. Spherics, anything with BASF, it's kind of handy. You get gloves every time you open up a case. Every case has a set of gloves, which is awesome. So, this one, which I actually have some product in right now, we're waiting for the sprayer, has a splitter. We put a splitter in this one. This one just has the rinser. This one also just has the rinser, but uh, the little pin come out and it flew out somewhere and I've yet to ever find that sucker. So uh, now it just blows water and it doesn't spin it, rinse it awesome. Probably 70% versus this one. But we gotta fix that. This one has your blender, we call it the blender for our granular. I also have product in this one currently right now. Put a splitter in this one. So we have two with splitters, two with rinsers and all these go out this boom and you can control, uh, you could uh, suck that one down, rinse this one, uh, all independently from this station right here. Technically, you could apply two different products at the same time. So like, you could put herbicide in those two and fungicide in these two. So these are the H and the S, yellow and gray. So you could literally just suck out these two and not suck out these two and wait for the other square, but man, if you ever grab the wrong lever, bad things would happen. So technically you could do it if you're ultra, 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 ultra careful, but uh, I don't think that fiber recommends it at all. 
case there is any seepage around the valves, you know, you're putting a herbicide on something that you shouldn't be putting on or a fungicide. I have yet to do that just due to the risk of pulling the wrong valve. That's why if I was to order one, I would put two, one boom, two, one boom, totally separate pumps. No chance of contamination. So what you hear running right now is our air compressor. Oh yeah, we have a fuel tank up on board so uh, we can fill the sprayers. So all this system runs off air. So uh, if you were to order a trailer, it would probably come with a great big air tank. I don't know how big the air tank is, but it's pretty big. And then it's loaded with your semi-air, okay? Uh, we have that tank. We didn't install it because we prefer just to uh, run an air compressor. Because typically we don't like to uh, run the truck. The truck is running right now because I just got here and I need to cool it down. So once you got your air operational, you can always hear that tick, tick, tick. That's your air pump. A little air diaphragm pump. Air compressor just kicked in to supply more air. So you always got fresh water. Okay. And you can independently rinse. So if you want to just close this puppy down, turn on the rinse. You're rinsing. So, so I know you guys probably got some questions. Mike, why would you put uh, a splitter in? What's the advantage to splitting over rinsing? Well, let's check that out. So for rinsing, you just take your jug, 50% of jugs, the cap just comes off like that, no seal. The other 50% of jugs uh, have a tin foil seal wrapped around it. I prefer the tin foil seal, because then it's sealed. You can pick the jug up like normal, and you literally just flip it upside down and stuff it over this, and it will just glug itself out. And I've never caught any tin foil yet in the bottom. It just literally, literally mushes the tin foil up, grab the jug, go, you know, tear the rest of the tin foil, down it goes. These ones, since there is no seal or tin foil, you just gotta kinda gently glug it and then just slide it right over that, and that is what we're going to do. Sorry about the angle. I don't have a lot of options around here. You literally just take your jug, pour it gently in here like this, slide it over, let it glug itself out, and then normally you grab another one, you stick it over that one, by the time you get this one on, you hit the rinse. Or if you want to take this splitter out, you could rinse this one too, and you just kind of keep going down the line, and then you just kind of, you literally just keep going back and forth, okay? Obviously this one's rinsed out. You turn this puppy on. You want all this, you probably can't see it. There's some brown in here. You want to make all that brown go away. It's chemical that's stuck to the bottom of the jug. Get a little rinse like this. There you go. Done deal. Nice and clean, guys. Nice and clean. And you stick it back in the box. Throw the lid back on. Mike, what do you do with these uh, jugs when you're done? Well, that's a really good question. You see this big roll of bag right here? You bag all your jugs, you recycle them. And that's what you do. Now, going to the splitter, Trying to figure out how I can show you this without dropping my phone because I don't have Hammy with my mic and my holder and stuff for you guys here. So I'll figure this out here. Sorry about the angle, but I guess that's where you're gonna have to be. Well, I'll throw some down here because normally splitting is a little bit messier, which is one of the reasons why some of the guys don't like splitting. When you split, you want to puncture your jug right here, right on the not in the center kind of right here at the one-third area, 25%, and split the sidewall up like this, okay? So it's actually gonna go down on an angle and split like this. I prefer to rip this off. This is just your directions. Get rid of that, because chunks of that will come off, or you might peel that whole thing off and drop it inside, okay? Then you just go like this. See what we did. So obviously it it's way quicker to drop it in. There's our little puncture. These are razors. Go like this, like that, okay? And then you hold it for the sake here. I'm gonna have to do this. Turn on the rinser and 
sometimes there's a little bit of a mist coming out depending on how you may have broke that jug. I really should have went down further. I'm gonna give it a good rinse here. Okay, and we're gonna shut it off. Now, this is the downside to splitting. Let me see if I can show you guys this. Gotta find some shade here. Don't mind all my garbage I got here and junk. See, when you're splitting, it's really hard to get the, the bottom floor of your jug. You see that brown tinge? That's actually fungicide stuck there, okay? You can easily rinse the sides, the top, really hard to get the bottom. It can be done with enough time, but it's hard to do, okay? That's why when you just rinse the jug instead of splitting it, you get a far more thorough clean and there is less chance of when you rev it up like this and jam it down on that splitter, less chance of splash back. Okay, so that's the difference. Now, I know you guys got some questions like, Mike, clearly just rinsing the jug seems to be the way to go, so why do you even have the splitters in there and not just uh, the rinses? And that's a really good question. I think it's just because we're slow to come around. We, uh, you know, we've always split jugs. It's just always what we've done. And uh, if you have the jugs here and you have like, you're in splitting mode, you can technically get your chemical in quicker. Okay? Split, bang, rinse, gone. Split, bang, rinse, gone. Split, bang, rinse, gone. And you're off the races. When you plug it in, you gotta glug, 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 glug. Rinse, 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 and then out. We have done internal on our farm competitions. Who can put in like 10 or 12 jugs the quickest? Splitting or with the rinser and the splitters win every time because it's bam, it's right in. Rinse, 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 gone. The only difference is the downside is you don't get as thorough as a jug rinse. Clean. So technically you could say you're recycling a little bit of your fungicide or herbicide or whatever it is that you happen to be splitting. That's the downside. The upside is, is it is a little bit quicker. So we use both. But now we're leaning to just taking a little bit extra time and then rinsing it. That's where we're leaning. So we might actually take this splitter out. And we'll probably always leave one splitter. With one. So that's the deal. Let's, uh, let's rinse out a few more. All right, sorry, you guys are on an angle again. I just, all I got to work with here, I'm just gonna rinse these two jugs. See, waiting, 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 waiting. Okay, rinse. Very thorough, rinsed clean. Now it's split. that you're making for speed. So I guess it depends on what kind of hurry you're in. Let's see if we can rinse this off a little bit better. We would never normally do this. Normally it's split, rinse, huck the jug. But I've got time to kill because I'm literally waiting for Donovan. Oops. Don't worry, just water. There we go. Nicely rinsed out. So that's the deal, guys. That's the deal. So it's very quick to split. You just don't get as good a clean. We're just gonna close our lids. Come down here. So if you pull this halfway, it will suck it out. If you drop it all the way down, it will suck and rinse each one, okay? That's how it works. 
Halfway suck, all the way suck and rinse. I guess I can turn off our air compressor. There we go. And then you just throw in whatever uh, micro poison fits your needs, however may, uh, whatever rate you want to put on, and you're off to the races. And I know you guys got some questions like, whoa, what the heck is all this micro crap you keep talking about? Uh, well, you got your macros, fertilizers. Macros are your, uh, your potash, your nitrogen, phosphate, and sulfur. You got your, your four big macros. Then you got your micros, such as like your borons, your coppers, your magnesiums, your, uh, then the list goes on, okay? And now you don't need near as much micros as you do macros, and uh, you can put on all the micros in the world, if, but if you don't have enough macros, it's not gonna make a difference. Or you could put over apply your macros and be really deficient in your micros, and you, maybe you can't utilize all the macros you put on. So. Farming is like this big game of uh, chemistry, soil testing, seeing what you got in your soil. You know, if you're low on one, can you utilize the other that you just put in the ground? So on and so forth. And there's like a thousand different companies out there that sell all their micros and everyone says they're the best and basically pick your poison and run with it. Kind of deal. So now you know. So that's the dash. And uh, that's it for this video. I will catch you guys on the flipper. Adios amigos. Next video we'll actually uh, we'll wander out in the field and uh, we'll take a look and kind of talk about what we're spraying for. All right, see you guys later.